Welcome to the Vassal module for Stonewall Jackson's Way 2. This is a quick video guide to show you how to use some of the main features in the module. If you're completely new to Vassal, you're going to want to check out the user's manual that is found up here under the help menu. Read through that and that'll explain to you some of the basic functions in Vassal that you'll find in any module you use. For this one, to manipulate the pieces on the map, we're looking at the main map area right down here. Just click and drag pieces to move them around from hex to hex. When pieces are stacked together like this, what you want to do is, uh, if you need to pull out one of the pieces in those stacks, double click on it, and it will expand the stack like that. That way you can click and drag, pick out individual pieces that you might need. Put them back in if you need to do that. You can also change the order of the stack. Use the arrow keys to move the pieces up and down within the stack, like so. Most of the functions that you need to use are accessed by right-clicking on a unit. If we go over here to this cab unit and right-click, we'll get this menu that pops up. And you can see here you can place fatigue markers, flanks refuse markers, demoralized markers, auto-supply markers. You can delete it if it's eliminated, and you can flip it to its exhausted side as well. All of those things you do through the right-click menu here. You don't need to grab a marker from the uh, game pieces window and drag it onto the map. Just use this menu and it'll put it there for you. With everything else, most of what you want to do, uh, you use by clicking on these buttons up here in the toolbar. The two most important ones are these recover buttons here. With the games in this series, at the end of every turn, you normally have to recover your units and go through and do that manually, one unit at a time. Uh, the module here will do all of that for you, though. What you just need to be sure to do is to click the right one here. For most scenarios in most games, you'll use the one on the left with the picture of the sunshine. If you're playing an advanced scenario where you have weather in effect, you may have rolled rain as a random event. If that happens, then you're just going to use this button on the right. But if you click on the Recover button, like so, it'll go through. Sometimes it takes a few seconds if uh, it's a large scenario. But once you click on that, and then click somewhere else on the map just to clear everything off, you'll see that all the units have been recovered. Uh, they, If they're eligible, they will entrench automatically, like the CAV unit over here did. The only difference between this and the physical game is that each unit that's entrenches, even if they're in the same hex, will get their own breastworks marker or whatever it is that they've just dug in. Uh, in the physical game, you're supposed to use just one marker for everybody in the hex. It's a little bit different in Vassal, but you'll get one marker per unit. But the effect is the same. Continuing on down with the toolbar, you've got your game pieces window here. As I said, most of the markers are placed automatically for you, but if you go up here to unit markers, there are a few here that are not commonly used and you may have to drag out onto the map if you're using them. You've got artillery points here if you're playing an advanced scenario where there are subs and detachments that you might want to reassign artillery points. Uh, also, the scenarios where there's railroad movement involved, those markers are here. And if you prefer using the leader activation markers to show who is moving during a leader activation, those are here too. Uh, there are charts. All the charts that come with the game are in this window. Uh, the two force displays are next. Each player has their own force display, and then there are also turn tracks and other information that's in there. When you open this up, uh, if there are any reinforcements that come in in a particular scenario, those units will be he over here on the turn track. So you can just grab them from there and then drag them onto the map where you want them to be. For advanced scenarios, you also have the county control display. For the ones where you have to track who controls which county, you can uh, keep that up to date here by clicking on these buttons. They'll toggle back and forth between blue and gray to show who controls those. You've got a notes window, just in case you want to keep any notes about what's going on in the game. The two dice. You have a screenshot button here. You've got the overview button that lets you uh, uh, real quickly jump over to different parts of the map click on it again, you'll be over on that part of the map that you've selected. If the map is really big, it's kind of handy to do that. And then the zoom buttons, where you can zoom in and out. That will only affect your display, so if you're playing live with another opponent, that's not going to affect what zoom level he sees on his screen. It's only on your screen. 
And then a very handy button that uh, some people don't use that often. I think they miss that it's up here. But there is a hide button. Sometimes when you're looking at the pieces, you need to see what the terrain is under the map. If we zoom in here, um, rather than moving pieces around on the map, all you need to do is click this hide button and it will take the units off. You can see what the terrain is underneath them. The button changes then to show. Click on that again and the units will come back. Some of the scenarios, such as this one here, have units that can't move at the start of the game. They've got these turn markers on them that show you what turn they can move. The easiest way to handle that is if you go into the uh, over to the turn track when you advance the game turn marker over to turn 2 and come back. Now those markers have been cleared off. As long as those markers are on the unit, they will not recover, so it's important to keep them stacked with their units until it's time for them to activate. And again, the turn marker will do that automatically for you. There's one scenario that has some special instructions that uses invisibility. If we go over to scenario 7, which way did he go? When you log in as the Confederate player, and you go over to the screen, you're going to find that if we go over to the middle of the map, the force markers that are used in this scenario are all sitting out here for you. Your units are over here on the Confederate force display, and if you look up here, you'll see them kind of ghosted out. That's an indication to you that only the Confederate player can see them. The Union player cannot see those units, so you can move them around on the force display, put them in which uh, particular force markers you want. The Union player won't know which is which, and when you're ready to reveal them, you just right-click. And you choose this one right here, Invisibility On or Off. And that is everything you need to know to use the module. Good luck with it, and have fun.